Hey, this y'all. conference will now be recorded. All right, everybody. My name is uh, Rod Soto. I'm here with Jonathan Rospero. Uh, and uh, we coordinate the meetings for Hack Miami. Today, we have an uh, introduction to hardware hacking with Honey. Uh, and uh, we uh, basically uh, invite you to join us at Discord. I think Rospero uh, already posted a link, or he will post it again. Uh, other than that, Rospero, do you have anything to say or? No, I'm all good here. All right, then uh, I'm going to pass it to Honey. She is a member of uh, Hack Miami. She's uh, also been at DEF CON, uh, and she is actually part of the Hardware Hacking Village. Uh, and we're going to let her introduce us into uh, Hardware Hacking 101. Take it away. Thanks. Can you all see my screen? Can you hear me okay? Yes. Awesome. All right. I got my subtitles on. Hey, uh, this was probably the most challenging presentation I've ever made. Uh, and I want to apologize in advance. I'm sick. Uh, so I'm not feeling great today. So if you hear the sniffles and the coughs, I'm sorry. We're going to work through it. Um, as Rod said, I'm a volunteer. I've been a member of Hack Miami for like, I'm not saying how long because that's a long time at this point. Um, and I've been part of DEF CON Hardware Hacking Village for like about six years at this point. Uh, you can find me on Discord if you want. That's my specific honey. I'm one of the many. Um, I always do disclosures and liability statements at the beginning of all of my presentations for Hack Miami because um, I, I don't know what you guys are going to do with this information that we covered today, and therefore I can't tell you whether or not you're doing something that you might not want to be doing, but I will tell you that in hardware hacking, you're definitely going to encounter dangerous substances. You're definitely going to encounter lead, toxic fumes, uh, metals, all sorts of good stuff. So you want to make sure that you are uh, protecting your bodies and keeping yourself safe. And also, you're going to avoid all the warranties on everything you touch. So just know that. And uh, it's your responsibility to stay within compliance of state, federal, national, global, whatever laws. That's on you folks. Yeah, avoid all the warranties, man. Right to repair. All right, so um, I'm all about that. But um, just so you know, that's on you, fam. All right, so moving on. Uh, so after doing all this research on uh, hardware hacking, I now get every joke in that episode that I did not get before. Uh, wait, maybe, let me go back. So I'm um, Honey. I started out in hacking in the SE world, social engineering, as a defensive skill. And once I, because I got hacked pretty hard and I wanted to make sure it didn't happen again. So I started learning everything I could learn, everything I could get to. Um, and I liked it and I was good at it. And the more I learned, the more I realized how social engineering is really creepy. And um, OSINT is even creepier. And I kind of wanted to start researching what I considered to be the polar opposite of those skills, which was hardware hacking. Um, after this presentation, I'm, I'm going to stay where I belong in SE and in uh, OSINT because this was meaty for me. And I, I hope you guys gained something out of it. I learned so much doing this research. So, um, yeah, don't break the laws. Uh, safety equipment also just, you know, you're going to inhale a lot of these fumes and um, you don't get prophetic visions from it. You just get brain damage. So please just make sure that you're protecting yourselves. And also make sure that whatever substance, especially if you're soldering or desoldering, whatever um, solder falls down. So make sure that it don't solder over your lap or over like your skin. And if you're going to do that, just wear natural fibers so that you don't burn your stuff off. Right. OK. Um, so what is hardware hacking? Um, it's not what I thought it was when I started this presentation. It's not what um, it's so much bigger than that. It's so much. It's huge. <laughs> Basically, any alteration of an electronic device or machine that makes it do something that the original manufacturer didn't intend. You can add parts, you can take away parts, you can speed up your clocks. It, we'll get into it, but pretty much like everything can be hardware hacking. So uh, I went down the rabbit hole pretty deep on this and I came up with a, a good spectrum of stuff. I learned some stuff about electrical engineering. So if you're going to be in the hardware hacking world, you're definitely going to want to do some some basic electrical stuff. That's that's it. It's also fixing though and repurposing, making your own use for things. So hardware hacking is such a broad topic that I, I figured like 
pretty much like everything at this point. Um, hold on, I'm just checking the chat. So yeah, I put the, Rospeto, I put the subtitles to Spanish. The people who speak English can hear me. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so um, yeah, so making your own use for things. Um, does anyone remember Furbies? Furbies are where this rabbit hole led me pretty pretty early on, and I, I got to tell you, man, I didn't like it. Oh, they're horrible. We're, I'm going to show you. Yeah, you'll, we'll get there. All right, so all of these things can be considered um, hardware hacking. It's not just the stuff that you think of, like the rubber duckies and the Wi-Fi pineapples. It's, it's the Furby hacking, too. It's, all right, um, tools that I recommend that you start with and and the other thing about hardware hacking is it's super super um project specific it's very project specific so depending on what you're trying to do with what device on what interface on what chip with which sensor or whatever you need a different tool set so the ifixit kit is pretty much considered your assembly disassembly kit like you mix this with the soldering set and and that's your your hardware components for the most part. And I fix it'll help you disassemble some really tricky stuff too. Not that I'm trying to plug it. It's just, I mean, you can go and get all of those tools yourself, but um, the kit just kind of has everything. Um, using that kit, you'll void the warranty right there. Um, so it's some kind of interface, a tool that lets you interact with the chips or components that you're trying to use. I'll give you the top three tools that when I did some interviews, I came across. And um, we'll get into that in a later one. Logic analyzers and oscilloscopes, th those, those get real specific and there's a whole argument over which one to use in what circumstance. So it's very specific to the project that you're trying to use. Um, I read an article about a guy who hacked a projector, a, a LiDAR projector using just an oscilloscope, but in the end he couldn't decipher the data that he got from it because it was in such raw, form so again it's very project specific um you're gonna need google you're gonna need github you're gonna need reddit and a raspberry pi and an arduino can't help and this is just my first um of two only two hardware hacking village defcon plugs um they have a cali distribution a cali um with all the tools loaded on it everything you need it's updated regularly so it's got all sorts of uh, functional stuff and I've got links every every part of this presentation has links to either the article that I got the research from or to the product that I'm telling you about so that afterwards I can send you the you can go ahead and go on a click journey like I did uh, yeah okay so we're still on the Furbies okay nothing in the chat um, all right so you've got to be able to communicate with the devices in their language uh, and these are these are pretty much the top three common uh, protocols, languages. It's not I, anyway. It gets real deep into electrical engineering. Like some of these aren't really protocols, but just a Jake tag is not a protocol. So how you program the machine when you first uh, inject the code, I guess, into the chip. And some people lock their JTAGs, some don't. This the JTAG is like most synonymously used with the Xbox 360 hack, but really you can use them for everything. Um, and they do use them for everything. Um, some people lock their JTAGs, like some manufacturers will lock the, uh, the not the port, but the, the ability to use it and a lot don't. So it never hurts to try and JTAG. When you find a concrete definition for the word JTAG, you let me know fam, because that was one that I had a rough time on too. Um, okay, so depending on which protocol what you're talking to and and you just google it nobody remembers everything so you just google it you're like, okay i'm trying to interface with this microcontroller you just google it and it'll tell you what what protocols to use and what machines use it so everybody uses uh google and github no matter how experienced you are you can't remember all of this stuff all right so um i tried to include three different these are multi-protocol variable voltage tools you can say that five times fast and i'll buy you a beer at winter hacker festival um if just take a look at the boards for a second um they're super well labeled super well labeled i hope you're not trying to watch this on a phone otherwise it's like way tiny um the tiger is the newest of the three 
and my hardware hacking buddy bunny who is our lead at hardware hacking village defcon this is the one that he uses and recommends but he says the bus pirate does more but it's kind of a shaky piece of equipment sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't um but it's great and it does a lot but the tiger does or tiger does what it does very well and you can see they're almost the same they've got the same pins little lights that tell you uh what you're using i like the on off switch for the tiger tigered can you see my pen if i use my pen my laser pointer here i'm gonna use my laser pointer this thing is cool this this eliminates like a whole whole side of these boards because you could just toggle this on and off um no no weird programming needed so but the bus pirate does a million things um there are links to each of these like when you click this it'll give you uh, and i included the adafruit one the adafruit one is the cheapest of the three it does the three main components um you can see right here it's got all your grounds it's got all your ports um they're multi variable voltage means that you can use them in three volt or five volt the t-yard goes all the way from 1.8 volts to five volts so that's kind of cool um the eight is the smallest but it's also the cheapest um and it's always in stock so that's always nice um it does ic2 you can see it here they're labeled very well so if you want to just take a second to look at these boards and these are what help you interface with whatever you're trying to interface with whether it's a, a screen that you're trying to see if it works or if it's a a chip on a board that you're trying to look at i kind of just want to give you guys a second to look it over and zoom in can i zoom in here oh i can look at that all right that and the in. goal is it is it zoomed in yeah. Yes. There we go. And and I legit I just straight up stole these pictures right off the manufacturer website so it's not like this is some secret and I give you the link to the stores where you can buy them if you're into it. They're pretty cheap considering all the functions that they do. Um You can also buy an individual tool to do each of these things if you wanted and that tool would probably work wonderfully but then you, you're carrying around a box of tools, which, you know, some people don't mind. Some people check their luggage when they go to DEF CON. Some people carry a backpack. I'm one of those backpack people. Um, so on top of these devices that help you interface with whatever you're trying to interface with, whether it's a chip or the back of a Teddy Ruxpin, or <laughs> that one was horrifying. That that was that was the one that's going to be in my nightmares tonight. The Teddy Ruxpin I found. Um, yeah. Uh, but whatever you're trying to interface with, so this is what will help you interface with the hardware. You also need to interface with the software. So let me turn off my laser pointer. Here we go. Um, this is just this is just a drop in the bucket. There are literally hundreds of different softwares that you can use free circuit analysis oh thank you thanks mike that's what's up excellent uh guys check the chat for a free circuit analysis and design <clears throat> excuse me sorry to cough in your ear folks um these are all included and then this is my second hardware hacking village plug i promise um and the only reason i include this link this is the link to their their cali distro on on uh, github and it's got all the tools that they recommend using and that well, I say we recommend using, but this stuff is, it goes real deep. So these are some of the tools that you can find the software that you need, because once you interface with the hardware, then you've got to find a way to translate what the hardware is saying so that you can read it and interface with it. Most, the bus pirate, the, um, and don't Google it backwards, because if you Google pirate bus, you get a whole lot of really weird sea shanties and a dude who converted a school bus into a pirate bus. So the bus pirate, um, they come with their own software libraries too. So if you are interested in that hardware, then um, it comes with the software that you need to read. And then Kali is always the recommended everything for everything. Uh, oh yeah, Great Fet is like another thing. Thank you. Um, oh, Phil, what's up? Hey. Hey, honey. How are you? Man, talk. Good. Oh my God. Hey, you tell me about the great fit. I, I've been talking too much. Tell me about the great fit. 
No, I don't want to jump in here on your speech, but uh, it's no, a good I, little I gadget. Very this... much want you to jump in. <laughs> it's a great little gadget. Um, I haven't really taken advantage of it to its full potential, but um, it does all of the same protocols. Uh, does you allow you to do like interactive uh, programming? But the coolest thing that it does is allow you to do um, USB uh, emulation. So there's some pretty cool attacks that you can uh, pull off by emulating um, a flash drive and then simulating a whole file system. So it's really cool attacks. I've actually been wanting to do a talk on it for a while. But uh, it's a little bit pricier, but it's a really cool device. You know what? That you pay for quality though. So and especially if it's going to be something that you use more than once or you or it becomes part of your everyday toolkit, I, I say it's worth it to spend the money. But I also buy a lot of badges at DEF CON. So. Um, <laughs> But yeah, all right, thanks. Yeah, great fed is one of the tools I came across. Um, it's so, you can't list every tool. There are so, 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 so many out there, which is why I say that if you're interested in learning um, hardware hacking, that one of the best places to start are those blinky badges from, from any con you go to. I just saw one that had a mechanical lock that opens. It's from a con that was like last week. It was the shape of a lock. You program, and it had a mechanical like, it was a, it looked like a, a locker lock, like a, a combination lock. Super cool. Um, and those are some of the best places to get started because one, you're going to be in a community of people who are trying to do the same thing you are, and that helps. And two, it gives you a focused project to learn on. Um, and that is invaluable because if you just go, okay, I want to learn about hardware hacking, like I did, I started with, okay, I'm going to hack my vacuum. And then I was like, oh man, I really like my vacuum though. And I, <laughs> If I break it, which is entirely 100% possible, because if you solder the wrong thing or you pop something, like that's it, it's done. And I like my vacuum, my little, um, we got one of the ones that's smart enough to, to make it around the house without falling down the steps, but stupid enough that it doesn't map the room, which I'm really grateful at because we also found that there's a really amazing hardware hack for vacuums where the LiDAR is getting hacked and it basically turns your vacuum into a listening device. Did anybody come across that ever in the, the hardware hacking world? The hack against, it, it was, it's just like a year ago or so. Super cool. So um, these are some of the example softwares that, that I, I wanna say I recommend, but I'm really, that are popular. And then the, the Cali distro on the HHV GitHub has so, so, so much. Um, so I wanted to give you some some examples of what I've come across um, from common to straight up weird. Um, all right, so this is the this is one of the things that people love to do hardware hacks is to crack your to crack your X. This is an old Xbox. It only works on a certain Xbox before a certain date, and I had one and I lost it in my divorce, and I'm so sad about that. But it's a uh, it's what what it does is it allows you to bypass the the uh, the control mechanism that prevents you from playing cracked games and you can run homebrew on your on your Xbox and it's gorgeous. Uh, this is the inside of the box. Again, uh, when I send out the PowerPoint for this presentation, you could just click on the title that's underlined. That's actually a link and it will take you to uh, the article that I read on how to, how to JTAG your Xbox 360 which is such an old device at this point. I'm not, I'm sure that there are emulators that are so far beyond this. So that's the other thing about hardware hacking. Sometimes there's just easier stuff. You can just buy it, but it, that's not about the adventure. You want to be about the adventure. So cracking your consoles, there was a crack for the original V2. That was awesome. And then it just lets you play your homebrewed downloaded games. So fun times. Um, these are probably two of of the most widely known hardware hacking devices. You've got your duckies and your pineapples. Um, I don't know if you consider the pineapple, a lot of people consider the pineapple a hardware hack because it's a repeater. So like the signal was only supposed to be within this certain area and you're repeating it and, uh, and it allows you to do like man in the middle attacks and all sorts of things. And then rubber duckies are, it, the ducky itself is not a hardware hack. What you're doing is you're exploiting the key, uh, the USB by it's expecting a keyboard or something friendly so by plugging in this thing that reads as a keyboard and it's a key logger it injects programming it does all sorts of cool stuff um 
Has anybody ever used one of these uh, that wants to do a swim? Someone who isn't me used one of these and? You guys are so quiet. Should I lean in and wait in the silence or should I move on? Sure, I've, I've used a few of them. Uh, rubber duckies for an attack and a few um, actually like uh, Arduino based ones that have multiple payloads. Um, made a staged payload using one. It was a good attack. Good times. Okay. Did you have to pair it with an SE attack or did you just walk in and shove it in the back of the computer and there you go? Yep, basically. Um, oh, I actually, I, I made a variant for, uh, the point was it was supposed to assume no privileges could be used on a guest account, um, and it worked for different variations like 32-bit, 64-bit, and uh, OSX. This is like six years ago. Um, but it was a fun little project. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah, that's the fun part about any of the malicious hardware hacking stuff. Usually, and that's the funny part that I didn't expect. When I started researching hardware hacking and when I started into this world, I started with soldering like everybody else, but I had no idea you have to pair the delivery of these devices with some sort of usually kind of sophisticated SE attack to get them where you want them to be. Because, you know, plugging this into a crazy radio from mouse jack attack. Hey, Mike, do you want to explain that out loud? Because I understand all those words separately. Yeah, I'm sorry, you want to jump on? No, you're I, awesome. I'm just, really, I love I'm just really enjoying your presentation. I uh, no, it's actually when I when I set up TwiffleSec over here on the Southwest Florida, uh, was one of the first demonstrations I did for the crew, uh, just showing that you can buy a simple Crazy Radio PA um, off of Amazon or any other electronics place, Alibaba or whatever, um, for I think it's less than twenty dollars or something. It's super simple, the the snag one, and you could. Uh, just use uh, the jacket kit uh, uh, and some Cali and just sit out in a parking lot basically and just scan for the um, the radio signal that's coming off of your um, wireless mice and keyboards. And once you see them showing up, then you can just uh, intersect the signal and basically in, um, um, inject um, keyboard strokes, mouse clicks, stuff like that. And so we we did a demo of it and and basically took over a computer and and pop notepad and calc just to just to show what was possible with a because people don't typically update their firmware on their wireless mice and keyboards and it's uh it still exists out there um because the, most of the vendors uh, weren't pushing those updates to the their firmware little the little universal usb chips you get with every wireless mouse and keyboard uh so it's it's a, a simple demo to show people, uh, and it still works. That's unsettling, dude. Yeah. <laughs> That's super unsettling. Um, I'm I'm a little like unhappy that Apple's kind of getting rid of all these ports. I still plug my headphones in when I can, and I'm just like not ready to move over to Bluetooth for everything. And I feel like I'm being forced, and I really don't like it. Like I'm gonna. I'm ready to go back to my Walkman that I had when I was a child. Although those are back in style now. So, um, also another example of a hardware hack. This is definitely not what the manufacturers of the gas pump intended, um, and it's just a little piece of hardware. It just slips right in there. Um, when I was Googling this, just checking my sources over the, the last couple of days, I came across a news story in Michigan where they did a random sweep and found like. I don't know, between 15 and 20 gas stations in this area that had been uh, compromised. And they think it's all the same group. So uh, these are another example of hardware. This is, I started with the malicious stuff because I know Hack Miami is uh, at its core security group. Uh, but I got to tell you, hardware hacking gets, uh, oh, this is for you, Hack Miami. Oh, Bay, can I have the original one? Can I have the Linksys? Do you have any old Hack Miami people here? Like, like, I wonder. No, probably not. We have the original Linksys with the percent twenty-seven stickers that don't exist anymore. Somehow my husband ended up with it. So, um, any favorite war stories on this guy? Does anyone know who this guy is? Our WRT fifty-four G. Of course, the classic. I mean, like, 
I know it's a classic, but I feel like I'm talking to a one-on-one group who wants me to like lead them through and I'm just not there. You know, it was a, oh, here it is, here it is. Thanks, baby. Uh, let me, uh, at least I brushed my hair for this. Hold on, where's my camera? <laughs> I think one of my thing is in full screen. It's not going to show me anyway. But we have the original one. It's crazy old. So when they distributed this Linksys router, they distributed it with um, Linux. And it's, uh, well, it's super flexible. It's a super flexible, wonderful piece of machinery that people could use and manipulate and uh, boost your signals and do all sorts of malicious shit on. And um, after this comes out, uh, you know, the company kind of backs it up on giving people flexibility with their programming and their routers. Um, there's a link to the, I think it's a Vice all about this, all about this hardware. Super cute. It's old at this point. People do still use them, but like, I don't know how it, it's, Good times, good times. So you could just basically patch into this guy, change the firmware. It, he can be caught over everything. All right, so I think here's where the weird stuff starts. Oh no, okay, all right, so I stayed. These are your blinkies and your badges. This is, this is where I would learn. Honestly, this is probably gonna be my next step is hitting my DEF CON badge for this year. Um, I know most of the hardware stuff on the DEF CON badge this year. Let me zoom into, ooh, there we go to the back, um, you know, it's a don't stop the signal thing. Like if you look, um, can you guys see my mouse? No, you can't. The guy with his mouth open and there's a binary code above his head. There's a, a little pill there. You're supposed to, oh, spoiler alerts in case you're actually going to do this yourself. Spoiler alerts. Yeah, but if you haven't looked this up already, I don't I don't think you're gonna. So anyway, you've gotta like follow the signal. There's a, a pill here, there's one um, down in the bottom left-hand corner as well. And uh, basically you desolder one pill and solder the other, and that changes the path of the signal. And when you're plugged into your computer and you got your programs running, it'll give you the next step of the code. Uh, the next step of the code is to connect the ET finger, you know, the ET Michelangelo, finger uh, to the space needle or to the ground because it's just the space needle is just a ground anyway. Um, yeah, and that gives you the next signal. So this is a great place to start because one, it gets you used to interfacing between your computer and a board. Um, and again, like I said about the con badges, they get you together with other people who are interested in, in looking at it. Did you just drop hacker boxes? You did. Okay, I love hacker boxes too. Hold on, Sam says, yeah, but that router was, um, that router was a classic, Sam. If you want to take a second to explain the glory of it, you guys can do it better than me. Um, these are just things that I found on the rabbit hole of what is hardware hacking. Just in case, Sam. Samuel wants there's to. A, the open RT was just it was just the original and it was a very good router for what it could do and it was people could figure out how to do it uh, I mean they, they they do have some modern 5g variants in the that were WRT also called like WRT like I use in, I think it's an open the an open the WRT 1900 ACS ACs and whatever so they do have more modern five five fifth generation Wi-Fi ones with the firmware that the FCC requires lockdown isolated so you can still edit the device. So what are the good. benefits of being able to edit edit the device? Like what are the cool things that you can I do? I mean, well I would say I have another one router like that, like I have a Netgear the Netgear equivalent to the 54G would probably be the 3700. I know it was a workhorse a lot of people were working with, including me. The advantage is I have a you have a router that's five to the extent you can do it is I mean, some of these are 10 year 10 15 years old at this point aren't they and there you you can still get modern updates for them to the extent that you haven't overflowed the available storage space on the device so you can so you can put mesh networking in them it's, it's very common to see mesh networking put on these devices or if you want to install pretty much anything linux on them that fits they can 
I mean, I mean, one like that one wouldn't have USB ports, but newer devices would. Actually, I don't know if the 54G did, but the Netgear I referred to does, and there, I mean, I have the 1900 version has a has USB 3 on it. You're kidding. So you, so you can then attach. So it's basically a device, and you can then attach. So if you want to plug us, you you want to put have your networking device do file sharing, it can. Or. Oh, is that? How, oh man, is um. Uh, Jax, are you here? Is that how he made his pirate box? It was just a box that he used to carry around and it would just, just you could leave something or take something, leave something or take something. It was always powered, always on, and it was just this tiny signal, 15, 20 foot radius or something like that. And it could also it have been a Raspberry Pi in that case, but yeah, I think he either used a Wi Fi pineapple or a Raspberry Pi. So fun. I miss him. I hope he's coming around the Winter Hacker. Y'all better come to Winter Hacker Festival if you're willing and able to be in person. I think it was a pie, but it was like, yeah, that thing was cool. Um, all right, yeah, the, do we have interest in making a Hack Miami hash, uh, mesh network? I thought we talked about it at some point. How close do we have to be together to do that? Is it a couple miles or is it less than that? It's probably less than that. It would depend if you're trying to operate under amateur radio rules or, yeah. or if you're trying to operate within the FCC allowed output of a device like that and how Far. directional you can point all those antennas mm, okay right i think so it's project um, <laughs> i think it's one watt limit for for wi-fi okay. you'd have to start getting into like microwave links or amateur radio as he's saying to do any, okay. like a principal there is one amateur radio group that has a, a link runs a wi-fi link all, all the way from from Delray Beach to Florida Atlantic University, and that's how they get internet. Oh, that's awesome. No. To, to, have a, to a remote shack, yeah. That's awesome. Can you drop? Do they uh, do they have a link or something where we could take a look at any of any of that? Could you drop that in the? And we got all sorts of great stuff. I don't going know if the they have chat. a link. Uh, like, I know the link exists. I don't know if they formally comment about it anywhere. Oh, I think it's actually two amateur radio groups to get their internet through Florida Atlantic University. But that's pretty. Right there. I, I think it's personal. I think it's overkill, but it's just where they were. They couldn't get DSL or anything where they put repeaters. Also, uh, check see. out Linus Tech Tips had a video. He's done two of them on uh, like prosumer grade dir um, directional like link to link microwaves so that you can get like a few kilometers distance on like I think Ubiquity makes them. Um, but again, it's it's overkill, and they're point to point. You have to have you know line of sight from from one tower to another, so it doesn't make sense. Hook up your, hook up your antennas, people. <laughs> right. You have those those silly what's their name, which are, are playing with uh, the low speed mesh networks and trying to oh, mint LoRa? silly coins. The LoRa's, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I came across LoRa in my in my in this rabbit hole of looking and i was just like i'm not covering anything that has to do with radio <laughs> i'm not doing anything that has to do with that because i know we've got experts in the group that are coming up with a talk for that for the next round and i'm like i'm gonna learn about that a little more before i even touch that with a 10-foot pole <laughs> with my yeah. cantena i've given two yeah, talks on it and it is a rabbit hole don't go down it yeah. <laughs> can you just give a quick Quick explanation, because I know there's a lot of newbies on here. That what is LoRa, real quick, and then, and then I know you're planning on something for later, or I don't know if it's you or someone else, but I didn't want to step on that talk. Uh, LoRa, I'm not giving a talk on it, but LoRa is basically just a, a a low power wide area network, and I think it's based on they're all open like IMF frequencies. I think it's based on four four uh, four three three megahertz. Mm -hmm. um, you see them used a lot in things like uh, I think. I think they use them in what are they called? Like those energy meters, um, and and other devices. But they're pretty low bandwidth. But the nice thing is that they they have a long distance and pretty low power requirements. Well, that's what's up. All right, folks. So this is definitely something that we can we can expound on some more. Um, all right. So back to the blinkies and the badges, which is about where I'm comfortable because I uh, I love those hardware arts and crafts. Um, and then I just gave you a little piece of what the terminal would look like, how to reset the buttons. Oh God, I love Tindy. 
Tindy anything. They, they've got to be somewhere in this presentation. All right. Ah, so this was actually the first thing that I was going to do because my Keurig is broken. And so I figured, hey, let me hack my Keurig. And then I started my master's degree. So um, this is some other dude hacking his Keurig. And he also will go to the next step of plugging the water into a water source that's forever on so that, but you still have to put the little K cup in, you still have to put the cup in. So I'm kind of like unsatisfied with this hardware hack, but it's, it's, don't let me talk shit. It's actually a really good hack and it's smart. It, he made his career wireless. So he just like signs onto a little website in his morning and like presses like initiate and the Keurig starts brewing, but he has to put the cup in the night before. Um, and then he wired it up so that he no longer has to put water in the tank, but that it's hooked up to a permanent water source as well. And um, yeah, so it, it's pretty cool. Um, you still have to put the cup in at the end of the, the night. Uh, so that was the only hang up. And um, Honestly, it's beautiful and it's a brilliant hack. So now his Keurig is wireless. And there's a link to, I shit you not, like 20 pages of directions on how he did that. And I went through them and it's, the you gotta have patience to be in hardware hacking because it's not, I'm telling you right now, it's probably not gonna work the first time you plug it in. There's always a something. There's always a something like a resistor you put on backwards. I, you can't really put resistors on backwards, but like stuff like that. like. And then you got to go through your steps and, uh, okay, wiggle every wire, make sure you didn't bridge anything or have any gaps anywhere. Did I program it? You know, so, so just a little bit of patience in yourself. What button down? No, nah, it's a joke. You know, like you said, oh, yeah, was like like the the first time. hold the button down. You know. <laughs> have you tried turning it off and on again? So no, I'm I'm joking because I was like, oh shit, am I on mute? Oh god, that would be the worst. I've been talking for like three minutes now. So we I I I know every single one of you has felt that moment in the last online year of oh shit, I've been on mute this whole time. So oh oh he, here we are. Here we are, folks. We've made it to the 1980s hardware hacking, which I gotta tell you, people love this stuff. People on the in the community, the the most die-hard people that I've met get the most excited about this kind of stuff. Like people who have like PhDs and or whatever you get for electrical engineering that makes you like the shit at it. Like I don't know. And they look at this stuff and they're like, oh my God, it's so cheap. So she didn't even hack the bear for this one. She she so she I want you to just take a look. Um, this is a snip from the YouTube which was as creepy as you think it's going to be, by the way. It's actually as creepy as you think it's, it's worse. It's going to get worse from here, folks. We're only going downhill from here. Um, so she's got it. It's like a, a three-track cassette tape reader writer, basically, is what that thing is. And um, I want you to take a look at the cassette tape in the bear's lap. And I just said that sentence. I'm getting my master's degree, folks. Take a look at the cassette tape in the bear's lap. Uh, those two little uh, holes on the sides, though the ones that are far left, far right, if you tape over them, it lets you tape over the tape. So what she found out was that when you look at this tape, there's a frequency, or not, there's a track for the, for, for the audio, like what the bear is saying. There's a track for the music, you know, the background music. And then there's a track that is inaudible that makes the bear's mouth move. So if you only record over the part that's the bear's audio, you can make him say whatever you want with the music behind him. Well, you, I guess you can record, you could have the bear be like, you know what, let's not get weird folks. Okay, so you know what, you can make the bear say whatever you want by recording over the proper track. And as long as you pay attention to where the the audio signal is for the bear to flap his and he blinks too it's a double freakiness yeah he flaps his mouth he opens his mouth and he blinks um as long as you sync it up you know you make the bear say whatever you want and he does now other people have gone a step farther and you can also get teddy ruxpin hacks there where they have integrated a Raspberry Pi because there's a hole in his back where the cassette tape goes. So some people have pulled out the cassette 
tape hardware like entirely and just integrated like their own audio speakers and everything into the back of the bear and then you just put his shirt you just close it back up um and he says whatever and it's it's tr it's truly creepy it's truly horrifying um yeah so I, I linked you to that video there um where you can watch the entire process of her and she's really like a normal looking lady too it's quite it makes it worse um in my opinion yeah and um this was a 2 a.m find this was two and i'm never up till 2 a.m like i told you guys i've been um i've been sick so i've been uh, up late doing my schoolwork and my own research for this and um this is what happens when you mix circuit bending uh, circuit bending is a whole weird awesome music a lot of music a lot of that m m m m m music that hardware uh, that defcon is all about it has a lot of electronic stuff in the background that's circuit bending um so people took like the the circuit bending plus the teddy ruxpin and furby hacking and this guy is actually he's actually kind of he's really he's really freaking cool man he does this with like a game boy wall too like he circuit bends all, all sorts of electronics like honestly like it's his day job so like yay for him like live your live your bliss bro um it's kind of creepy that that's what this dude's bliss looks like though because it's an organ of furbies and i'm it the videos that i've got here they don't the video doesn't play i just have a screenshot for you but what he does is he integrates the mechanics of the furby into the synthesizer and when he plays it they all sing on different pitches and they open their eyes and mouths and this is not the only furby hack this is just this guy's furby hack and there are so 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 many others yeah it gets real dark um and all of this is hardware hacking um the raspberries uh, you, you definitely want the raspberry prize and the arduinos because they offer you um a lot of accessibility and they're cheap um but everything from the duckies to the the gas tanks to the the blinky batches and the furbies it's all considered hardware hacking which um i basically found out when I started researching, it's like giving a presentation, like what is hacking? And it's like, okay, here we go. You know, it's its own, it's its whole own branch. So um, I have links to, oh yeah, special thanks. I download all my slide templates from this place called Slides Carnival. I figured I'd keep it in there because they wanted me to. Um, and then Bunny at the DEF CON HHB Village is my hardware guru. And he's helped me design uh, the Winter Hacker Festival badge that we gave out a couple of years ago. It was a real simple, circular, pretty little purple PCB that had six blinky lights on it and, and a battery. And um, we, that was the first thing I had ever, that was the first board I had ever designed. And it was really a cool process. And he was the one who helped me with that. And he's the one that helped me today. Um, so, um, I don't know if you have questions or if you'd like to throw those in the chat. Uh, if you'd like to organize a Hack Miami Mesh Network, that'd be cool. I'd be down to aim an antenna at some of you. And um, I put also links to some of the articles that I found that really helped me because um, a lot of a lot of hardware hacking is also understanding electrical engineering. And I kept a lot of that stuff out of this presentation for. I'm not even gonna lie to you for one reason me explaining that was real rough and i would rather hold off and explain it at a later talk when i understand it better than to come in here and try to explain to you the the benefits of the difference between serial and parallel bit transfer like because it gets like that so um are there any things that I can answer or help y'all with before we go ahead and break? I'll make sure that this presentation, the PDF version is distributed through our Discord so that you can clicky all the links if there was something that you liked that you wanted to find. But please make sure that if there's a link in the chat. Um, oh, that's what's up. Yeah, I'm glad that you learned something. Um, come to our meetings. We've got experts in every field. Next time I give a talk, it'll be on uh, OSINT or SE when we're ready for another one of those. Um, there's a whole new suite of uh, tools in that field that have been released because, you know, businesses get smart, services get smart. They start blocking, you know, how we search. You gotta, you know, you gotta come up with new ways. So there's a whole new world of that. So I'm happy that this was, um, yeah, Discord, uh, 
Respeto, can you drop the Discord link again? And then I'll um, I'll send Respeto or Rod the uh, PDF version of this. Um, and it should have all the links active and all that good stuff so that you guys can click around and see what I saw. And I'm sorry about that because I'm telling you, 2 a.m. Furby, Oregon was a little bit the stuff of my nightmares now. And you know what's the weirdest part? I didn't even hate it. I kind of was vibing on it. That's the weirdest part. I couldn't even be mad at it. I was like, okay, this guy is actually pretty decent with his Furby organ. It was cool. And he's got a Game Boy. He's got this. It's a whole YouTube channel. It's kind of sick. So, yeah. All right. More more details to come on Winter Hacker Festival. And um, thank you all for going down that weird hardware hacking rabbit hole with me. Thank you for uh, the presentation. Um, any questions? This is the time. Yep. Also, uh, we also do have the uh, hardware channel in the learning and help section if anyone wants to post questions in there after the meeting. And want do we to... have a hardware channel? Because I was looking for it. It's un 